Ghostbusters Frozen Empire just released. Got to see it today. Let's talk about it right now. Alright everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for spending time with me as we rant and talk about movies, television shows, and comic books, as well as the occasional board game, card game, etc. Uh, I kind of do pop culture across the board, so if this is your first time here, welcome. Uh, remember to give me a like, and if you can subscribe, please do. I am trying to grow the channel out, so thumbs up and ring the bell. Uh, I am your host. I'm an award-winning screenwriter, novelist, and comic book writer. My name is Frank Zanka. Uh, I'm also a working line producer, but not so much uh, since we've had the strikes. Uh, I do get back on set in May. Unfortunately, there's nothing going on until May at this point. Uh, we do have another strike that's looming. Uh, if you want to see anything that I've written, I am on Amazon under my name, Frank Zanka. Uh, and also, if you're looking for anything uh, signed, we also have uh, my comic, Lords of L.A. It's my vampire mob set in 1950s Hollywood. It is uh, on Fund My Comic. The link is in the description below, and you can check that out. Uh, issues 1 and Issues 2 are for sale through that. Uh, it's pre-sale, actually, because I only have about uh, seven pages left to do when we are going to be ready to go and finish that one up. All right, so let's jump into... The, uh, the movie, so we did Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. So let's jump back uh, to the original Ghostbusters. The original Ghostbusters is a flash in the pan. It is uh, probably one of the most perfect movies uh, as far as a mixture of comic book type of heroism with uh, comedians that have a huge amounts of chemistry together, uh, you know, fighting super, supernatural enemies, uh, but maintaining uh, the comedy uh, throughout. And it is written extremely well. The acting is perfect uh, because we have these connection of actors that have probably been friends for decades. Uh, you know, Sigourney Weaver joins, you know, that cast. Of course, she probably hadn't worked with them uh, as much as they had worked with each other. Uh, but it, that was fine because she felt like the outsider there. Uh, you know, Rick Moranis also at the same point uh, coming off as the as the goofy guy, but turns, you know, into, um, you know, one of the villains. Uh, so there was lots of good twists and turns. We had this really epic ending with the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man, which was, you know, completely original for its time. And yeah, it just had some really great original things like the proton packs and, you know, all this stuff. We got to, we got to feel that heroism when everybody was cheering for them at the end and stuff like that. And we really haven't gotten that ever again. So that was like, that's why I'm saying it was a flash in the pan. So there's been now... Well, with this one, four more Ghostbuster movies that have never felt the same. Uh, and it's unfortunate we can't get the writing correctly to give us that, you know, epic ending again. So we had Ghostbusters 2 with Vigo or whatever, and I just was not a fan of that movie. I thought that movie had, you know, a lot of problems. It didn't, it didn't give me the same vibe at all. Uh, even though we had the same cast, it just it just didn't come out the same. Then we, of course, had the Ghostbusters that everybody hates. When <laughs> they disregarded, they tried to reboot it with all women. It just did not work. They tried to disregard the entire uh, last two movies, including the first one, and that's just never good uh, when you disregard the probably the most perfect movie in, uh, in history for that kind of a genre. And uh, you totally disregard it and say, hey, I'm going to do it better. Uh, yeah, that's just not going to work out. And uh, everybody kind of forgets that ever happened. Uh, then, of course, we had Afterlife, uh, which, you know, brought back the original cast uh, at the end and kind of a hoorah type of situation where, you know, uh, Egon uh, was, you know, was dead in real life. Um, and... 
you know, he got to be a, basically a CGI ghost and everybody kind of teared up on that and stuff to that, Ivan Reitman. So, and I know that his son was involved in the first one, you know, with Afterlife and now Frozen Empire. So I went into Frozen Empire hoping I was really going to like it. And I did. I did like it. Now, is it perfect? Absolutely not. Does it have the ending like the first one? No. <laughs> I mean, uh, did I like it better than Afterlife? I actually did. Uh, I did like it better than Afterlife, um, although it had problems. And the main reason that I liked it better than Afterlife, because I know a lot of people liked Afterlife better, and they felt that it had more of a a charm to it that this one did not have, and mostly that was probably due to the directing. Uh, but the reason I liked it better is that it wasn't an origin movie. I didn't have to go through the origin again. We started out with action, which I really appreciate. So we started out really strong, I think, with the, with an, I think it's 1908, with cops, you know, going into this room where everything is frozen, the people are all frozen, and they find a woman in there holding a ball. And we don't know exactly what any of that had to do with till later. So then we jump right into an action scene uh, with the whole family in the Ecto-1, uh, you know, with, uh, with Chloe. I think that's her name. Chloe was, uh, is hanging out the side with the proton pack. And I really like that. And uh, I like jumping right into it. I didn't dislike the story. I didn't dislike the villain. I thought all that was good. Uh, I think that Paul Rudd and Carrie Coon do have a little bit of chemistry. I wouldn't say it's a great deal, but at least there's a little chemistry there. Uh, and I do feel that McKenna Grace carried this film pretty much on her own because she is the main character. Uh, I watched a bunch of other reviews, and I do agree with a lot of what other people have said to a point. Uh, yes, they don't spend a whole lot of time with a lot of the other a lot of characters, but we did spend some, a lot of time with Phoebe's character and her relationship with this ghost because she does feel alone. She's younger than the rest. She's 15. She can't really be a ghost bruster. We came, Peck is now mayor, but I didn't get that. I didn't realize that he was mayor when we see him in the scene. I don't know if there was a sign that I missed or whatever else. But Peck is now mayor, and he's being, you know, the dick that he normally is. And he says it's, you know, that even as an intern or whatever else, uh, Phoebe cannot uh, be a Ghostbuster because she's too young. So they leave her home, and she's feeling, you know, kind of, uh, you know, disassociated from everything. And she meets this ghost, and she has a, you know, a, a relationship there. Uh, I was kind of worried that they were going to, like, go relationship with it as opposed to like a friendship but thankfully they didn't go there they get pretty close like physically close at times and there is some holes in the plot there's a, probably a lot of holes in the plot and the director in this one Gil I forgot the Gil's last name Gil Keenan he wrote Afterlife but as far as a director he has very few credits for directing and that may be some of the problems here is that he just did not have the experience for directing something to this effect. Uh, but he also wrote it, and that's being in the industry. I'll tell you that's the biggest problem. There are only a handful of people that can write and direct because film is a collaborative effort. Okay, Film and TV is collaborative. So when somebody, a writer comes in with something, the director is there to punch holes in it and say, hey, this is not going to work visually or this is a hole that we have to plug. And sometimes, a lot of times, the, the producer will fit in there as well. Now, I don't know if Gil also produced. I didn't notice that or not. But the problem is when you're writing and directing, there's nobody out there to tell you that your idea sucks. <laughs> Because everybody else is just a yes man. You know, your actors and everything like that, unless you're Jenna Ortega, you know, you're, you're not going out and telling the writers that they suck. <laughs> and 
And speaking of that, we do get to see the Beetlejuice trailer, and they couldn't have picked somebody better to join that cast than Jenna Ortega. I'm so excited to see that. I'm glad I'm glad that Keaton's coming back to reprise that role. That movie's gonna hopefully gonna be awesome. Uh, but let's jump back into Ghostbusters. So I think Gil is the weak link here. Uh, I think that he should not have written and directed it. I think that there should have been like Jason Reitman. It said that he's part of the writer, but I don't. I think that it, he's just a figurehead. I don't think he had anything to do with it. Uh, so, so Gil was the controller of the entire thing. So that's the problem. I think that somebody could have come in and said, "Hey, you know, your third act needs to be more epic." And that's one of the problems too. Is that you have the setup, you have the setup, and we don't have an epic ending. And that's part of the problem. It has a lot of good stuff. And I know there's some other people that said, hey, it's just a bunch of member berries. It's a whole bunch of just, you know, if you're a fan of Ghostbusters, they threw this at you because, hey, don't you recollect, you know, this happening? Weren't you a fan of this? And here's this because we're going back to the library and we're seeing some stuff in the library from the first movie and blah, blah, blah. So we're getting a lot of throwbacks. But the other characters from the original movie are in here with Dan Aykroyd having probably the most screen time out of all of them. Ernie Hudson probably having second. And Bill Murray just kind of thrown in there. I wish he had a little bit more. Um, but he had uh, just a couple of scenes and that was it. And... I think that's part of the problem, too, is that we're trying to do... It's kind of like Jurassic World, where we're trying to see the old and the new. We're trying to see... If we're going you know, kind of do an analogy of Star Trek, we're trying to see Kirk and Spock and McCoy, you know, mixed with John Luke Picard and, you know, number one and that kind of thing. We're, we're kind of trying to see an amalgam. And sometimes, obviously, when you do that, there's just too many characters and you're not able to give them enough to do. Uh, each. But I think that there was a good balance here. We, again, we don't get enough out of it, but uh, I like the whole idea of the frozen stuff. We just don't get enough of it because the villain doesn't get close enough to his end goal to make it epic, if that makes any sense. But at one scene, the, uh, the proton pack uh, beams... He actually freezes them, and then they fall to the ground. I thought that was really cool. There was a lot of cool little things in here that I liked. They put the um, uh, the ghost trap uh, onto uh, a drone. I thought that was interesting. There's a lot of really interesting stuff. I, w I was kind of hoping to see more of Slimer. We don't really get to see much of him. He doesn't really do much. Um, and then, you know, they had some other ghosts that one's called a Possessor. And it possesses inanimate objects. I thought that was a great idea. So it has a really a lot of great ideas here. And I also like, uh, so Lucky from the first movie. Uh, again, they could have deleted some of these characters from the first movie that you didn't need. So Lucky was one of them. Uh, and Podcast, you could have got rid of him. He didn't really do much either. He was He's kind of becomes Dan Aykroyd's intern. So they have a whole different division that's kind of like Q branch where they're kind of create, they don't go out in the field, they're kind of in a, in a lab trying to create new weaponry and gadgets and everything like that for the Ghostbusters. And their logo was different. And I really appreciate that too, because I thought there was a lot of attention to detail for this kind of thing. But instead of the circle on the outside, it had a gear. So those are the guys that were doing the creation stuff. Again, I, I really like a lot of that attention to detail. Uh, but could it have been more? I, yes, absolutely there could have been more. It could have gone from good to great if there was just somebody else in that mix other than Gil. And I think, again, that was the problem because it had some heart to it, but Gil was not able to bring the heart out of, uh, of the film like they did in the first one. So though I like this one better, I do appreciate the fact that the first film had more heart to it than this one. This one was more of an action film without a lot of action. <laughs> so, uh, but I, you know, I, I also learned that uh, Carrie Coon, uh, who played uh, Callie, I think, the, the mother, uh, she played... Um, 
uh, in the Avengers. Uh, she played one uh, Proxima Midnight in the Avengers, which was uh, you know Thanos, Thanos's you know right hand goons. It was like four goons, and she played the female. I did not realize that that uh, she played that character. A <laughs> great job that she was able to play a villain, uh, you know, and then you know play the mom in here. Uh, and you know, McKenna Grace, they, they make her look completely different than she does in real life. And I, I think that she's a tremendous actress to be able to pull off this kind of quiet role uh, where you're seeing the turmoil within her uh, and stuff like that. And then you have, uh, I forgot the gay guy's name from uh, the uh, the uh, Elementals, I wanted to say. The Eternals. <laughs> And it's funny that Celeste O'Connor is in here. She plays Lucky, but she's also from Madam Web. Uh, so, and Annie Potts actually has some parts in here. She kind of takes over Egon's role, uh, though she doesn't really do much except do a few screams. <laughs> Patton Oswald has one scene, thankfully. Uh, Kamel uh, Nanjani, he's the one from The Eternals. So I do agree, and it also occurred to me, obviously, when I was in the theater, he has a special ability, almost like the Eternals, and uh, they're teaching him how to use the power, he's learning how to use his power, but when it's needed, he knows exactly how to use it. So, you know, there is there is problems in here. You know, I'm not saying that there's not a whole lot of problems. There is. But... If you're looking, if you're a fan of Ghostbusters and you just want to have some fun, this movie has and delivers that fun. Is it ever going to match the original Ghostbusters movie? No. You know, there's a lot of people that like uh, the next generation more than they like the original series uh, of Star Trek. And that's kind of how this is. You know, it's... Is anybody ever going to like this group of Ghostbusters, this family, rather than the original group, you know, from the 80s? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. Uh, but who knows? You know, uh, I prefer seeing a new group of Ghostbusters at a lower degree than no Ghostbusters at all. Because uh, I, I love this world, and I think that if they can perfect it a little bit more... I think they can get there with a second tier. I mean, it's always going to be a second tier. It's never going to be a top tier like the original Ghostbusters is. It's just never going to be. But I'd rather do that than abandon it. Kind of like with Star Wars right now, I'm ready for them just to abandon it. But I don't think we're at that point with Ghostbusters. I think there's more lore that we can create here. I think there's more that we can develop as far as uh, the world building and, uh, you know, again, that's the, and the same thing with Star Trek. I think there's still more that you can build on Star Trek. They've just been doing it wrong. <laughs> I don't think that Star Trek is a dead, uh, you know, IP like Star Wars is. Uh, just like I don't think that Marvel's a dead IP yet. Uh, Star Wars, of all of them, Star Wars is the, the dead IP. That one just needs to go away for 10 years, 10, 15 years. Just go away. Um, and when no, but no comics, no nothing, uh, you know, like if the, I don't think there is a, you know, an adult version of Ghostbuster comic right now either. I would love to, to, to read a Ghostbuster comic where it kind of delved into this, where we, we went back to the original characters, you know, nobody's doing that though. So anyway, I'm talking too long about this already. We're on 20 minutes. So I want to close this up, but I enjoyed the film. I recommend the film. If you are a fan uh, does it get silly at times? Does it have holes? Yes to all of those things. So if you're going to hold that against the film, then maybe you, you shouldn't see it. But if you're just going in there to have a good time, is it good for kids? Yes, yes. It's all, all, all yes into that. And I had a good time when I left. I give it a thumbs up. I don't think it's great. I think it's good. Everybody else was giving it like a 6.5. I'm more on a 7 like this, so it's 7 to 7.5. It's definitely above average for me, um, but it's just not great, unfortunately. All right. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate all of you uh, spending time with me. Uh, it means a lot. And, uh, you know, any of you guys interacting in the comments and giving me the, giving me the thumbs up means a lot as well. Uh, remember to, uh, to subscribe if you can. Hey, it's free. If you're not subscribed, why the hell not? It's free. 
uh, ring that bell, and uh, yeah, check out some of my other videos as well. And remember that Lords of L.A., my vampire mob set in 1950s Hollywood, is in uh, the description below has the link to fund my comics. And if you're a, a board game fan or a card game fan, uh, Mark Spears, who does covers for Spawn and Vampirella, Power Rangers, etc., uh, he did a whole thing of classic monster art. And we're presently right now uh, in playtesting, finishing that up, and we're going to be launching... Uh, the card game on um, backer kit and crowdfund in the next couple of months. It's going to be lots of fun, and uh, I think you guys will all enjoy it. Anyway, uh, check that out too. Um, you check out the pictures I got I got coming up, and uh, I'll definitely let you guys let you guys know when we're going to launch. All right. Anyway, talk to you guys soon. Thank you again for spending time with me, and I'll see you on the next episode.